It is going to be BDD on Syndra, no doubt. 206 KDA. It's not about BDD. Definitely have an ability to, to save its teammate, but you cannot save or devour five players at a time and the opponents are diving onto you. The Olaf as the game goes on. However, I just don't like the pick. Um, that being said, still going to be locked away. Also, well, they're going to take the Callisto. I was going to say Rel Olaf is also not a bad option either. Of uh, grabbing their support in their last pick and giving their Callisto the best time possible. This is very odd, this as is... it's just blind picks. And it feels like we're going to see a slightly different version, actually, of game two here in game three. So the Scion pick come through once again for Gen.G. I like Ash. The Ash is actually pretty interesting, but the Samira Whoa. is a big departure, actually, from T1. So what T1 is looking to do with this comp now is to poke everybody low and then Inferno trigger to clean everybody up. I mean, the Alistair works into Rel as well, but Gragas would be so, so strong because you can also deny the Rel and Gragas Callista is so strong. See a bit of a wraparound here as Kana slightly overextended. The Ghost already comes out. Acceleration gate. You can see Kana trying to go for the one for one as the Undertow is going to land, but they're just happy with a flash. And Clid is just going to run back towards his Krugs and say that it didn't even cost me any time. <laughs> this went. is super oh, cool man. from Kaz. Yeah, Clit spots him. He's up a level. Yeah, this is really rough. Undertow actually misses as well. He's dead. Clit, there's no flash available. That's just going to be Cuz nicking first blood away. Great positioning. And look at this. Cuz has a pretty invisible game in game two. Turns yeah. it all around here. As there's the attract repel on the bottom side. Ruler has to flash to get himself out of the way. And now life in a bit of trouble. He has his flash available, but an explosive start to this one is now Rascal. This is a familiar situation as Cuz is going to get knocked up. He's underneath this turret. Kanner is going to go down, so it's a trade in the end. And That's... Rascal has teleport available here as well. Well, they want to use it so that they can actually get control over this Drake as there's the flash forward and Faker Huge just mistake. gets baited by BDD. That's a solo kill. And they were trying to give Faker the money for this Rift Herald as well as now Clid comes on forward. This could be even worse. Oh, this is a disaster. I don't even think that this one's getting connected. Oh this is not. They deny God. it. And you don't find the window to use the Rift Herald. You overextend. Blowing down an Udia is an odd choice. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, but he might be able to deny the steal. Should be able to. Go. Bad movie. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So we'll watch this one more time. So Baker actually teleports forward, gets the sleep, hits max range paddle star here, and then BDD just flash forward, presses the gameplay button after the scatter of the week. Like it's just that simple. It's Gen G. As yeah. You can see T1 with a slight advantage now. I just don't know whether it's going to be enough with things like the Scion here as Rascal got out of position by Kana. He got baseball by the back, so he has yep, to... Oh, oh the, the block. flash in front, but he's stunned for a little bit too long. Right, Clid running on forward, no mana on Rascal, so we can't exactly help him out. But Clid's going to be out of Stride Breaker his way out, and Cuz not going to be safe Teddy's underneath here. this turret. As, yeah, Ruler's going to move on over. Teddy shows himself as well. Nobody's getting side lane pressure, right? Ruler is not in the bottom lane. If Ruler's in the bottom lane here, you know, nobody likes this play that much, but okay, he stays. That's a teleport coming on in. Life. Looking for the Pulverize, finds it there, gives Petty back to the rest of Genji. Blade World trying to get some value, BDD. and he's going to get stunned. Yep, gameplay for you, Mr. Teddy. Because now Carrier trying to get out of there, Cuz as well, just booping whoever he can. That shot blast was decent. Just don't know whether it's quite going to be enough here, because they've already lost Teddy, and that is their end of teamfight win condition, right? Even with the Fates Call not co connecting, let's see what happens to this Rift Herald here. I'm not actually sure who got it because I, I, I thought Cuz got it, but yep, yeah, he does. And he just can't pick it up. So Teddy is off on the side here. He has to use Blade Roll early so he gets caught by BDD. No one is able to get in here on top of the side, so it doesn't get picked up. And that's just T1 losing everything they committed to, losing Teddy as well, and losing a go to get value. It doesn't even have to flash. Oh, Big Grady not actually going to press the Ragnarok button as in comes the train and everything misses until the train gets there and more gameplay for you, T1. Cuz now going to get caught out of position as well in Gen.G. This is uh, definitely a cold ball rolling down a hill right now as there's the exhaust life. Just desperately wanted to give this kill over to Ruler and will do so comfortably. Kana trying to get what he can on the bottom side. T1 yeah. have to win now three games in a row in this best of five to even get us there. And they are falling behind. They cannot even control Baron right now with his poke composition. Yep. We'll see whether they can rein something in there. Of course, Kana needs to be in position and Faker as well. But now the re-engage comes forward. We've got a lot of buttons being pressed. And now maybe it's the opportunity for T1. But Clint goes golden right in the middle of it. You can see 
Brula trying to do his best, but he's going to be taken down. The Baron helps him out. The Samira is dead, though. And now Gen G utilizing the more powerful wallets and just running at T1. That's a very short teleport. Very However, short. one that maybe Cuz not going to be able to. You know, yeah, you do get the extra, the extra movement speed from the teleport, but who was I kidding? It's Udia. And Once even, again, misjudging. Even in the perfect team fight for T1 that you hope for, where you get the poke done, they already took damage from the Baron. They've been chipped down. Smash. That actually ends everything. Let's take a look at this fight once again. So look at the Gen G members. They're starting to get fairly low here. The Baron's being chipping. And look, you see the damage oh, the come through. Is so good. And Teddy comes in here after you see the Magnet Storm. But he's just not able to finish off any single member. He's just <laughs> forever and ever stunned up here. And T1 don't have the damage to actually break through all the tankiness here. BDD free hitting. He's on the side here. Has untouched in this team fight. Sets up multiple stuns and the turn is unreal. <laughs> Gen G look to close this series out 3-0. It's not over yet, but they have a massive advantage. Well, just enough mana to take the train. That's like when you're looking in your pocket and you've got some change and you're like, can I afford it? It's very difficult to use Gen G's comp here against this poke without vision. You can see how much damage you'll take. Oh, it's a big teleport to come forward here as well, as Clid just says, I don't really mind about it being CC'd, but the Baron is turned away from Carrier, looking to try and get into position for this flank play. They have to hard engage Gen.G do, or they're going to lose this Baron. He's outside of vision right now, Rascal getting chunked just a little bit, Clid down to half as well, as the Baron down to 2,000 health, Cuz is going to get stunned, Clid gets into the pit, can he steal it away? The answer is no, he's just dead as T1 stopped their damage. They take themselves to the Baron. Rascal flashes away. Very low health. Buzz is beating. Faker has exploded. Faker takes control. And Genji have to walk away from a lost fight. That's a massive pick on a BDD as well. Their poke composition wins a team fight. It's all about vision control here. You can see the chip damage come through. Clears at half health before he has to Ragnarok in because if he doesn't, he cannot actually close the distance to the Baron to look for the 50-50. So he's, of course, immediately targeted down. Rascal's forced to flash over the wall. Look at where BDD goes. He actually does get slapped before he hits the Scare of the Week, but Faker knew exactly where he was going. And the ultimate that comes back is not enough to kill him. You can see Gen G! They can stop this whenever they want. Bubble is just going to connect, and Rascal gets the bad news. Teleport out from Kana. Hasn't quite taken the inhibitor just yet, as that's the decimating smash. This is a big zoom out now, as you can see Clit trying to get away from Kana. The flash not quite enough. Meanwhile, on Baker. the other side of the fight, Baker is taken down by BDD, who's now desperately trying to get out of the way. Carrier goes golden, and Teddy gets stunned. Oh no, the scatter of the week is a disaster, and now Ruler is bouncing over the fight. It's a triple kill so far, and Genji lost no one. BDD just won the game for Genji. He's able to stun Teddy before he can use his Inferno trigger just as he hits his S rank he's not able to pull it off and he gets the kill onto Faker at this stage in the game you can one shot a Zoe BDD once again comes up big a player we haven't talked about you talk about the four kings of the LCK and BDD has been one of the quiet ones this season but he comes back big in this series Atlas and I think he might have just put them into the grand finals this is extraordinary Genji now pushing on the Nexus turrets Kana the only man that can save it Carrier up in a couple of seconds Teddy in five Nexus turret number one goes down Carrier desperately trying to be the hero but the Nexus is exposed and T1 have been 3-0'd by Genji unbelievable turn of events here only one Korean analyst predicted Genji to go to the grand finals but they stomp and destroy T1 in three very dominant games in three completely different play styles. Games one and two, slow tempo-based play to aggressive, and in game three we play the more aggressive version of the game two composition. T1 get ahead, but make a few small execution mistakes, and BDD is there to scoop it up once again. The compositions we saw from T1 tonight were so hard to execute. They put everything on the line in this series. They went down 0-2, but had no fear. They put Teddy on his second career game of Samira with a poke composition, but the execution just wasn't there. There was too much CC, and Gen G have done what almost no one predicted, and we have an amazing grand finals here. Gen G, remember, coming off a win against Don Juan yeah. in the last match. One of the only times he makes a mechanical error, throwing the uh, scout of the week in the wrong direction. Yeah. And, I mean, this was just... Oh, let's watch this last <laughs> You can see the calls instantly go on to Samira as the ally has the ball, he actually hits it, and immediately everyone just starts screaming Samira. 
getting that triple, of course, BDD. I do have some gripes, though. I think that the T1 drafting uh, this series, much like their last one, despite the result, uh, also not super strong. I think it's Mirror Rel. Imagine if that was Ezreal Braum. Yeah, I mean, I would use it. I really would love it. Yeah, just not so much. I was definitely feeling that. I mean, you and I were, I think, mind link. We, we started talking about the Ezreal uh, that wasn't banned there at the end. Uh, it's sort of like, you sort of understand the theory, right? It's like, we need to push our advantages early. We've been an earlier team throughout the season, so maybe that's going to be our way and we can have some extra control. But when you're looking over at Ruler with his Callisto, it just makes it so much more difficult. Look at how happy they are, Atlas. I mean, they have really Ruler taken... Act, it feels like there is a lot of relief in yeah. the Genji house. They're, they have shaken off the T1 curse, you know, so to speak. I mean, it's is it a real curse? Hard to say. They beat them in Worlds qualifiers, but otherwise, in best of five series, Genji has not looked dominant against them. And Genji, the comms in that last one were great. BDD communicating so well, so quickly. He's becoming a real leader for this team, I feel, in a lot of ways. He shows so much experience. And series for Genji, and they are heading to the finals. And the player of the game will be BDD on Syndra. Wow. 가는 곳마다 유족한...